Well, I'm a huge fan of a certain fandom, and uh, when I found out they were doing a play based on that fandom, regarding a particular house in that fandom that I'm emotionally attached to, I had to go see it. And so they were showing a live performance of it that was recorded uh, at a local theater, and I went and saw it and fell in love. And when I found out Alchemy was doing it, I, I had to be involved. Uh, there's a little bit of pressure there, just because there's also not a lot of pressure either, because not a lot of people have seen the show. So you don't have to live up to this huge expectation of, oh, well, I'm familiar with it. You know, it's like, it's not like Oklahoma that's been done over and over and over again. People have an idea of who these characters are. You kind of get to put your own spin on it. So it's still kind of fresh, which is nice and refreshing, especially in theater where you're kind of expected to do the same thing over and over again. You kind of get to create these characters from the ground up, which is really cool. I started working with Alchemy. I was actually in their inaugural production of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And I kind of found out about it because a bunch of my friends in the theater community were forming this theater company. It was a bunch of major heavy hitters that were phenomenal and I wanted to get involved. Um, and it's kept that reputation. Like everything they do is phenomenal. And the fact that they've managed to be a theater that it was kind of a, a, um, a, a wandering theater, didn't have a home, um, and managed to put on amazing production after amazing production is astounding because you know when you don't have a home you don't really know what space you're working with and what utility you're going to have and their adaptability to to adapt to every um locality performat is absolutely remarkable uh the director jeff oh jeff i've known jeff for years so we went to college together um so i promise won't say too many embarrassing stories um no he's great he he knows what he wants and he knows how to communicate that he knows how to keep things fresh and interesting. Because in a show like this, where it's a lot of improv and a lot of um, kind of playing around, it's very easy to kind of get stuck in the same choices. And he's really willing to make you change that up. And maybe you go back to the old choice, but at least trying something new keeps it fresh for you, keeps it fresh for the rest of the cast, and keeps it fresh for the audience. The message of the show really appeals to me. Um, the, the show itself, although it's really funny, and especially if you're a fan of this particular fandom, you're gonna get every inside joke and just laugh for hours. Um, the message is really poignant and really um, special. Uh, it's, it's so heartwarming and, and really relatable to people, really no matter what house you belong to in this fandom or how you feel about really anything. It's, it's a very uh, universal message of acceptance and belonging and, and finding, kind of finding your tribe. Puff's universe at the beginning of the play. Um, well, the play takes place uh, seven years at a particular magic school of boy magic and girl magic, or male magic and female magic. And uh, it's, wizards exist and wizards are real. And it's this grand adventure of these group of misfits who don't really belong anywhere else, except they find out that at the end they belong with each other. So I play Ernie Mac. I play a certain potions professor. I play a certain large man, uh, the second headmaster, and basically all of the defense teachers throughout all seven years, um, and a couple ghosts here and there too. And Ernie Mac is basically the best. Um, he is uh, kind of from a long line of puffs. He he wants to be one of the best puffs. He wants to he wants to be the puffiest puff, and and really be that shining example. Um, I think he takes a lot of inspiration from uh, Cedric, who is kind of the, the leader of the Puffs um, and kind of wants to be following his footsteps. I'm trying to remember how to say it because it's not one of my spells. Uh, Igneous Kaniataro, I believe is the spell. Um, it basically transforms a rock into a dog. And who doesn't want more dogs? Less rocks, more dogs. My favorite class has to be potions. Uh, might be because I no particular potions professor who is pretty amazing and may or not be also played by me. Um, and it's, it's a fun class. You get to, it's like chemistry, but you actually get to make things that are useful and not necessarily as dangerous as chemistry. Puffs means to me integrity. Um, I think it's like doing the right thing even when no one's noticing. I want to say Wayne just because I, I feel a certain connection to him too, um, just because that, that, that journey and that story arc is, for anybody who's ever felt kind of as an outcast and felt like they needed to, they want to do something great, but they don't know what it is and what they're good at isn't necessarily dictated to them. 
and trying to uh, that journey of self-discovery and just finding out that no just being myself is enough is is something that's really cool that would be really fun to explore if i was if i was a wizard oh i'd definitely be a puff hands down i'm the puffiest puff it's ugly it's real i own it i want the audience to really have a great time uh be able to laugh with this fandom that is you know known worldwide and and really poke it pokes fun at some of the things that are a little i don't want to say problematic but a little uh tongue-in-cheek and a little rough around the edges and and again the message of the show taking that home and kind of um, implementing that in their lives of just you know let your freak flag fr uh, fly and just really find your tribe find your people and and make them make them the most important thing in the world to you the southern california audience should be going to puffs because first of all the show is hilarious and you're gonna love it especially if you like anything in this fandom you're gonna be rolling in the aisles laughing it's fantastic um again it's it's a really poignant message and a message that i think we kind of need right now uh a message of acceptance and accepting oneself and the fact that the show just closed off Broadway and now we're really kind of the only place you can see it. So meh.